this is with little falcon we sent out we've got chat pot as well we've got a wide range of hawks owls falcons eagles um this one's a red kite and he's one of the newest ones he's one of the newest members to the team he's showing off his wings there he's just came along he's come from a breeding program um so he's going through what we call a manning process at the minute it means i'm spending as much time as possible with him um, I'm sitting in his aviary, I'm getting him out for walks and just being around him as much as possible. The plan... The aim of this centre is to fly every one of our birds. We do want to fly them free. Um, you do that, is it, it, you train them through food, and you train them to, to gain trust in humans. And birds of prey only fly for food. It's a bit of a myth that people think all birds want to fly. Birds of prey want to fly all the time. Well, the the mindset, sort of the, the the way a predator works. If you look at every predator, going from a cat, a dog, a snake. If you go to the Serengeti to watch lions, you're probably going to see them asleep because they save energy to hunt. Now, if I put him up on this in the sky now to fly around, it's going to waste a lot of energy. So what they tend to do is when they've had a good feed, is they'll just go and sit. So just like your cat will sleep a lot and like your dog will lie in front of the fire after a feed, just like we would, we are predators. If we've had a nice big Sunday dinner, we'll, all we want to do is go and have a lie down. We want to lie down in front of the fire and go to sleep to save energy. What body tells us, our body is telling us to save energy. Um, we don't, our body isn't telling us to have a nice big full English breakfast and then go out for a five mile run. It's telling us to save energy. So it's a bit like these birds. So all these birds, when they're being fed, they'll sit. They'll sit quite happy in the wild. The only way you see a bird of prey flying is if it's either evading a predator or it's looking for food. It's on the, it's on the hunt. Other than that, they sit in a the train, save energy. We we'll do regular flying displays. Um, we'll have a wide range of different flying techniques. We we'll use flying to the glove techniques, um, where the bird's completely free and it'll fly into a glove. We use um, swing lures. We fly the birds to swing lures and drag lures. That's a mimic of the natural prey, and it moves like the natural prey, so it, it clicks in the bird's mind to hunt it. It keeps them nice and fit. It keeps them stimulated, and it gives a bird some enrichment. Um, so they're not just sitting there all day. They do get regular physical exercise, and that keeps your bird in prime condition, as fit as you can get them and as healthy as you can get them. Falconry, um, it's one of the oldest relationships that we've got with animals. It goes back round about 4,000 years. So it goes, it, it, it's on par with training dogs. We train dogs. We've got dogs in this country now. They're one of our biggest, most popular pets. The reason we've got dogs is because humans, a long, long time ago, trained dogs to help them hunt or to protect them. They're there to help us in whatever we wanted to do. Same with horses, we train horses, we domesticated horses to help with live, to help with do things. Um, even in farming, going back to, if you go to war, mil thousands of years ago, people were on horseback and they used for hunting as well. Birds of prey were used to hunt. We figured out a long time ago, around about 4,000 years ago, if it could catch a bird of prey and control its diet, we can use that bird to then go out and catch things for us to eat, things like rabbits and pheasant and duck. Um, so that's why falconry's around. It's sort of a, it's a it's a really really long tradition and a long sport, or some even say it's an art. It goes it's it's practiced all around the world. In just about every continent, there is some form of falconry. 